So, a little while ago, I was asked by a friend to make a promotional video for them that needed some Christmassy transitions. I had a look around the internet, but I had a little trouble finding a tutorial on how to do that, particularly one that didn't involve buying costly plugins. So, I muddled my way through and figured I'd share my process with you. This tutorial does not require any plugins, and any resources can either be made yourself, which I will show you how to do, or acquired royalty-free from a website I'm going to show you. To create the snowflake, I'm going to use Photoshop, but you can use any graphics editing software you prefer, as long as you can save your snowflake as a PNG file, which allows for transparency. So create a canvas with dimensions somewhere in the range of 2500 by 2500 pixels, but again, the size is up to you and how detailed you want your snowflake to be. Now, a trick I like to use is to turn on dual axis symmetry up here in the toolbar, so when it paints, it allows me to create a lot of beautiful patterns with just a few strokes. When you're finished, make sure your background layer is invisible and save as PNG. I'm just going to call mine Snowflake and hit save. Alternatively, if drawing isn't your thing, I can recommend a website called Pixabay, which has tons of royalty-free images which are free to use. Search Snowflake Transparent Background, and anything here with a checkered or transparent background is suitable for what we're looking for. Just head in and download your image of choice. Note. Just check to make sure there are no additional intellectual property rights on your chosen image before downloading. Most are free to use, but it's always better to check. Once you have your image, the first step is to open Adobe After Effects and select New Composition. Set the dimensions to 1920 by 1080. The duration can be set to whatever you need it to be. I've set mine to 10 seconds, as that gives me enough space to play around with how fast the snowflakes will move across the screen. Your background colour should be set to black. And I've just set the composition name to Snowflake Transition, but you can call it whatever you want. Then hit OK. Next, let's import our snowflake. You can do that by right-clicking here, and selecting Import, File, and then navigate to where you have your snowflake saved. Click it and then click import. Now drag your newly imported snowflake down onto your timeline and set the visibility to off by clicking the eye icon. Now we're going to create a solid. This solid will be the same size as your composition, so 1920 by 1080, with the background color also set to black. Click OK. Next, we need to add an effect, so use the search bar over here on the right, under Effects and Presets, to search for and add the effect CC Particle World. Under Particle, we'll set the particle type to Textured Quad Polygon. And under Texture, we'll set the Texture Layer to our Snowflake Layer. Now, our particle system will spew out dozens of little snowflakes, but we'll need to tinker with the settings to get them to move how we want. I'll go through each of the settings I used. Bear in mind, depending on how you want your snowflakes to behave, you may need to play around with some of these settings. Maybe you want your snowflakes to move a little slower or faster, or rotate more quickly or not at all. I'll do my best to explain what each setting does that I change, but feel free to experiment. First, we'll set the birth rate to 0.5. This controls the rate at which new particles are created. The higher the number, the more snowflakes are on your screen at once. Then we'll set the longevity to 1. This controls how long the snowflakes last before fading away. Next up are our producer settings. We're going to want to change the radius, both X and Y, to 0.05 and 0.4 respectively. These settings control the width, height, and optionally depth of your producer, and how large an area the snowflakes will be generated in. Next, we'll go to the physics section, where we'll set the animation type to fire. This controls the overall movement of the particles, whether they rise up in a wavering pattern as here, or swirl out from the center. We'll change the velocity to 0.19, 
This controls how fast the particles move, but this is also governed by gravity and resistance. Now we're going to set the gravity to minus 0.15. In this case, this will cause the snowflakes to drift downwards. This is because the fire type animation we selected earlier drifts upwards by default, and by putting in a negative number, this reverses the direction. We'll then set extra to 0.68. And then we'll set our rotation speed to 235. This controls, as you would expect, how fast our snowflake rotates. Next we come to birth size and death size, which governs how big the snowflake will be when it first appears and when it fades away. We're going to set both of these to 0.5 as I don't want the snowflake to change in size at all over the course of its journey. And lastly, we have the random seed under effects. You don't need to change this if you're only using one snowflake layer, but if you have more than one, you're not going to want them all to follow the exact same pattern as one another. So changing this number allows you to randomize their movement across the screen. It's also handy if you just don't like the pattern that it's currently moving at. Now we'll need to keyframe in the movement. Place your producer at your starting point, for me, that's just off the left-hand side of the screen. Make sure you're at the start of the timeline, then hit the little stopwatch icon. This will create a keyframe. Now I move to the end of your timeline and move your producer to your finishing point. For me, that's just off the right-hand side of the screen. Now your producer should move between these two points, creating your transition. Let's have a look at how it plays before we go ahead and export it. It wasn't looking quite how I wanted it, so I went back in and duplicated the layer and changed the birth rate, birth size, death size, and random seed values mentioned earlier. Right, that's looking exactly how I want it. To export, hit File, Export, Add to Render Queue. If you want your transition to have a transparent background, you'll need to make sure RGB plus Alpha is selected under Output Module. If RGB plus alpha is grayed out, make sure your video codec is set to animation. Then hit OK. You'll have to specify what you want to name your export and where you want to export it to. Then hit render and you're done. Let's have a look at the results. And there you have it. One snowflake transition ready for the festive season. In the next video, I'll show you one of the ways you can use this transition using Adobe Premiere Pro and a keyframe mask to produce a blurred wipe between two video clips. And with that, I'll see you next time.